everyone. Welcome to Post Lunch. Uh, my name's Ted. I am also, interestingly enough, a futurist at a movie studio, at a big movie studio, uh, 20th Century Fox. And I was thinking before when Cheryl was up here talking that I've never been at a conference with two futurists at the same time, and I was wondering if we cancel each other out, and then there's no future for any of us. This is what I was thinking, but let's hopefully not. Um, so I'm gonna talk to you about some interesting things. First, I wanna bring this up. Uh, both you would hear me and you'd also hear uh, Cheryl from Ford say that we are probably not really real futurists. We're more like futurists in training. Hi, everybody. Um, he's a real futurist. If you wanna do a little research on him and see what he's up to, he's an interesting guy. Before we get started with my little talk, we're gonna try a little sort of futurist experiment. So I'm gonna make a prediction that every one of you here, 100% saturation, has some sort of micro, very powerful computer slash robotic assistant in your pocket or on your person. You often call it a smartphone. Do you have one of those with you? If you do, take it out and hold it up. We're gonna try a very quick little experiment here. Are we at 100%? Okay, keep them, hold, hold them up high. Swap them with your neighbor. I'm gonna give you mine, you give me yours. So whoever's got one up here, swap one. No, nobody brought theirs with them, okay. So now you've swapped with your neighbor. Put that new phone in your pocket or your purse. <laughs> Just try it for a second. I'm gonna put mine over here. I've done this with audiences of thousands of people, with small audiences. The reaction is always sort of the same. There's a chuckle, and then there's a little bit of an uncomfortable sort of moment. Now, think to yourself what's going on in your brain and your mind right now. I haven't just taken your phone away. I've taken something more important than that away from you for a little while, right? Everybody feels a little odd, yes? See how long you can hold out. This is your challenge. Just remember to give them back or there'll be a crisis at the end of the day, okay? Just see how long you can hold out. So here's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk a little about human nature and what I think about all day long. <laughs> You're already traded? You guys can't even handle it for five seconds, right? Now that's an interesting comment on society what we're gonna talk about here. So let's imagine that one of us or some of us went to jail tonight for some strange reason, okay? Imagine that. If you didn't have your phone with you, they took it away when they incarcerated you, who would you be able to actually call without your little robotic friend? Maybe you could call your parents' phone from when you grew up. Maybe you know one other phone number. But beyond that, your robot has taken over, right? You have given up control. When was the last time you drove anywhere without using navigation? Including places you know damn well how to get to, but you're gonna check your Waze or your Google Maps to see what the best route is, what the most direct route is, right? These are things that actually set the stage for what I think about as a futurist. It's less about technology, and it's about how connected to it we are as humans, and how essentially we have given up control. Which leads me to this quote, which I think is really interesting. Um, he's a, for, for those of you that are as old as me, he's a famous movie cowboy, and he was also a very famous innovator. If you're curious about Will Rogers, do a little research on Will Rogers and see what he's thought of. This is one of his quotes. Even if you're on the right track, you will get run over if you just sit there. And if you think of the most innovative, most forward-thinking companies and what they think about and why they're constantly trying to reinvent themselves, they're thinking about this all the time. If they're at the top of their game, things can change very quickly if they don't keep altering and reworking and rejiggering their game. So here's the only thing you'll have to read about in my presentation. But this is interesting information as we talk about our little devices. Four out of five smartphone users check their phones in the first 15 minutes of waking up. This is all from research back in 2013. I would say now in 2016, going into 2017, it's probably like the first two minutes of waking up. So there she is. You know, they're getting a little less happy and clearly unhappy about that, right? 80% back in 2013 say it's the first thing they do in the morning. I would postulate by 2016, it's close to 100%. Would you agree? Because you do it, right? 80% three years ago said they have their smartphone with them or on them all but two hours of their waking day. I would postulate now that if we redid this study, it would be all of about eight minutes every day when you're taking a shower. That's it. And when you listen to Ariana Huffington talk about the fact that she's selling and marketing a little smartphone bed now, for those of you that were here a couple days ago, this is a real thing, right? You are connected to these devices in a very, very, intimate way, which leads me to this picture. This was taken a couple weeks ago. That's a Starbucks. Now look at how people are interacting and reacting. 
They're leaning into these devices, and they have incorporated them into their daily existence in a very robust way. So here's the question that I'm thinking about at a movie studio, is do we go here next? Are we ready, because of that experiment we just did and how connected you are to these devices, to move to the next step in how we visualize things? All of these devices, this screen here, these screens here that I'm looking at, your little tiny and moderately sized screens, are all what we call restricted space. They all have some sort of border on them. If I can take that border away and give you an effectively infinite amount of space to do your productivity, to do your entertainment, to do your socialization, is that something you're interested in? Is that something you're curious about? And how curious have you become because you're living on a screen from the point you wake up in the morning till typically the point you go to bed at night, and almost everybody is. So these are all the most popular tethered solutions now on the market. This is step one in the equation. They're all connected to computers or a PlayStation, which is essentially a, 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 a less powerful computer that's graphics incentive. Uh, they're essentially gaming and gaming style devices that have some other capabilities. And then there's mobile. These are the two most popular sort of well-marketed and well-exposed. There's a whole bunch of other ones out on the market. These are essentially cell phone, smartphone accessories that allow that restricted space to become unrestricted space and start to track with you. So I start to think about all these things all day long as we live into the future and what we think about from a future standpoint. So now you're asking, well, okay, really? So you, you saw the woman from Ford and now you got a, a guy from a movie studio who claims to be a futurist, right? And some of the background as to why I do this and how come I do this and how come I'm so comfortable sort of with all this nonsense is what, you know, what gives me the right to do this nonsense, right? Well, I grew up here, more specifically here in Central Florida, which I often refer to as the funnel of crazy, okay? So all the crazy that happens in the U.S. all sort of funnels down to this little funnel down at the bottom, and that's where I grew up. When I moved there as a little kid, six years old, this was the Florida. It was pretty backwoods, it was pretty racist, it was actually kind of a scary place. The next year, when I was seven, my world completely changed. And I literally grew up in the world of the future. This was my reality. And I understood something about this at a very early age that I still bring with me today, every day to work and every day as I travel around the world giving talks and explaining this stuff to people, is the concept of what I call spatial entertainment. There's often a reference point about people talking about, are there, is there a correlation to 3D and VR? There's only a very minor correlation, in my opinion, because when you understand theme park entertainment, you understand spatial entertainment, where you're actually moving around through things. And entertainment takes on an ability to take you places and bring you to things and allow you to interact and immerse yourself in a different way than restricted space, flat space stuff, even with a 3D layer on it. This is much more robust than that. And if you've grown up in a theme park like me, you have a very innate understanding of what that means and how that's powerful. So very often when I give these talks and we do Q&A, people ask me things, and I say, if you think about what VR and ultimately AR will be, the best, even though it's a little funny to say it, is imagine a day where you'll be able to strap a theme park onto your face. And you'll be able to have theme park level experiences with that level of intensity and that level of connectivity and that level of immersion, but you can take it anywhere. So that's what I think about all day long. This is something I put together for this presentation because I was also thinking about form factor. And I was thinking about how form factor is a continual state of change. And we've actually been kind of lulled into a little bit of a stopping point with form factor. As I look around this room, we're all looking at shards of glass, somewhere between this size and this size. And that's kind of where we've sat for probably seven-ish years ago from when Steve introduced the first iPhone, right? But you can see the form factor and what changes and how we're changing. Here's another example of how the form factor changes. I often give the, repre the, the representation, although I got in trouble for it once with uh, my friends at Samsung, because I'm completely complimentary of all this VR, AR stuff. But I also have a recognition of where we are in the industry and where we sit now. And I say that we are in the brick cell phone days of virtual reality, because we are on a pathway where we're actually, believe it or not, there's more wrong with what we're doing when it comes to the technology and the evolution of it than right. We're on our pathway to right. And I'm not the only one that says that. All the big companies that are doing this have an awareness that we're on a stepping stone journey, just like this stepping stone journey to where we are today with the devices we use now. So, as I wrap up this very short little truncated talk, the question is, are we gonna go here next? My theory is that 
the box on face stuff that we're doing now, and you can go see one out there, there's a Vive outside. Amazingly powerful, amazingly interesting, but they are not the future. The box on the face will only take us so far. We're gonna keep evolving this, and if we do our jobs right, and we as an audience and a group of collective people trying to move the ball forward, keep saying not good enough, not good enough, keep trying harder, we'll eventually get to some sort of eyewear, and we at Fox are working on very closely with this company, ODG. You've probably heard about Magic Leap. I spent a lot of time down there. That's more of the evolution of where things are headed, and even none of that is good enough yet. But we're heading towards something that will start to look like our glasses, like our spectacles. And eventually, I can't predict exactly the time, but it's, let's give ourselves a five to seven year runway. Eventually, you won't need any of the physical eyewear at all. And I can spend some time maybe on the panel talking about where that goes. But that's what I wanted to sort of give you a sense of and, and sort of what I wanted to talk about before we dive into the panel. These are just my sort of closing words. Be bold with what you're doing, be brave, take risks, and be willing more than anything to explore the edges. The good stuff never comes from the hearty center. That's, always, that's already been figured out. It's the stuff out there that you wonder, are these guys a little nuts, or are they gonna actually do something important? Those are when the next captain of industry get formed and when things actually start to matter. So there you have it. Thanks.